Now there's not much difference between lower end upper receivers and higher quality upper receivers. They're basically the same thing. My upper receiver here happens to be Fail Zero brand. And the difference between this and say a Colt or you know uh, Spikes is that this is nickel boron coated on the inside. Fail Zero doesn't make these anymore, but WMD and maybe a couple of other companies uh, do make nickel boron coated ones. Uh, as you saw earlier, it's got the rail on top, like most of them do, so you can mount, you know, scopes, optics, you know, magnifiers, um, cookie dispensers, whatever else you want to uh, put on the top there. I have the nickel boron coated upper because I have a nickel boron coated bolt carrier. This is also a Fail Zero brand. Uh, this bolt carrier uh, meets full mil spec standards, uh, except for the coating. Uh, nickel boron coating is a way of microscopically filling in the tiny little gaps that exist in the metal. What you get is a smoother surface that is slicker. In turn, you don't need any oil. Let me repeat that. You do not need any oil. When you have a nickel boron bolt carrier sliding along a nickel boron upper, the need for oil is completely eliminated. Some guys will say I'm full of it, but I've shot over a thousand rounds with this upper and bolt carrier, and the only problem that I've had was mag related, and that was fixed through upgrading the follower, uh, as you saw in one of my previous videos. So really, this bolt carrier group here is superior to mil-spec. Mil-spec BCGs will still need lots of oil. That oil burns off as the gun heats up from rounds being fired, in addition to the dust and dirt attaching itself to the oil to gum things up. Nickel boron really makes this an even more reliable platform. It also cleans up really easily as carbon residue and dirt just wipes right off with a rag or a shirt. my dust cover and my forward assist and my charging handle are pretty much standard stock kind of stuff although I am looking at swapping out the charging handle for one of the ambidextrous ones that are gonna have the uh, the latch on either side so I, I think that's gonna be quicker in in your mode of operation if you want to use your right hand you just gotta do that you don't have to spend time reaching it over or if you want to use your left hand you'll just have to you know just grab it from the one end I am looking at maybe getting one of those. I have the serial number taped off and it's a good idea for you too if you're going to do videos or pictures of your guns to cover up the serial number. If you have some sort of rival or somebody who doesn't like you um, all they have to do is call in and report a stolen gun with that serial number and if it's ever tracked back to you then you're in deep deep trouble even after you get your name cleared you will still have lots of legal issues so that's why I have my serial number taped off this is not stolen this is completely legal I'm just trying to cover my own butt here uh, so my lower receiver is a DPMS which is often regarded as a lower quality brand but when it comes to the lower receiver, there's not much difference between a Nevesky and a DPMS. The trigger guard, the grip, safety, the bolt carrier release, and the uh, mag release are all pretty standard. And I don't see much reason to swap those out except for maybe the grip. It's fine for now. But I'm looking at getting either a Hogue rubbery grip or a BCM or Magpul style. A, because of the more pistol-like angle that they'll be at will be a little more comfortable. And uh, the Magpul and Bravo and a couple other companies have theirs. They have a little flap on the bottom here where you can store stuff inside there. You can store batteries, cyanide capsules, whatever you need to do to you know avoid the zombies.
One of the real neat things about my AR is the trigger. I wish I still had the contact info for the guy that I bought this from because this trigger is sweet and I'd like to know what kind it is. It has to be some kind of match grade trigger and lower parts kit or something because this thing is really quick. The trigger pull is really light and the travel is minimal. I've shot several ARs and I haven't found anything quite like this. If anyone out there can tell me what kind of trigger this is just by looking at it, please let me know or if you can tell by any of the springs in there or anything about it. If you know what kind of trigger this is, please let me know. I will operate the trigger a couple times to maybe aid in that. You can see how how quick this thing breaks. It, I mean it's real light there and then you barely have to touch it and it breaks. I'll do it one more time. If you know what kind of trigger that is, please let me know. My sling is the Magpul MS3 sling. I want a sling that was more versatile than the standard GI surplus or other two-point slings and the Magpul delivers as this can be used as a two-point or single-point sling. If you get the right buffer plate right here, this is the buffer plate here, um, it's got a little uh, adapter in it to mount a sling like this. It's got a little button gizmo. Press that and it releases. And then if you get the right stock, which this is not yet, I'll get to that a little later on, then that stock would also have a similar thing in there. That would be for your single point hookup. So what you would do is uh, you would mount it to this little uh, loop right here. Now it's a single point. Or if you wanted it dual point, you can release it from there. And then attach it to your swivel up here. I really like this sling and I need to practice more with it to get my changes down faster and, and really work with it a little bit more and become just more familiar with the way it feels and the way it works. Now I don't know what kind of uh, buffer or uh, spring I have in here. They're both sort of standard. Um, see no reason to change them out. To get to get those out there's a little, uh, a little um, pin right there. Push that pin in and uh, you that would that would clear the uh, the ring of the buffer right there and you just pull it on out. Uh, the only reason that you would want to change the buffer out at any point is if you're going to go with a different barrel length then uh, switching the weight of the buffer will uh, and, and I don't know if, if it's you're supposed to go heavier or lighter depending on if you go shorter or longer on your barrel but it will aid in the extraction of the rounds because it will affect how fast your bolt goes back and forth. I don't plan on swapping that out anytime soon. Now I don't know what kind of buffer tube this is. I don't even know if it's uh, mil spec or civilian spec. There are two different sizes. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure that out eventually though because I do plan on swapping out the stock as well. Uh, this stock here is uh, standard Rock River Arms stock. It's collapsible. These are probably the most common kinds of stocks that you're going to see. Uh, this is a six position. Some of them are four position. Uh, I want to put on a Magpul or a Veltor uh, stock. Uh, they'll have some storage compartments along the top there and it will have that adapter so I can run the sling. I can run this part of the sling off that too. That, that aids you with your uh, longer shots because you have more control over the rifle then. You can see this one has the, uh, the, the uh, fixed two-point style um, thing right there. I also think uh, upgrading it will be a little more solid. You can see and here, this one wiggles around a little bit. I usually run it in the uh, all the way out position 
if I'm working with a girl or something, I'll bring it in a little bit. But even on the inner positions, it still wobbles. So there you have it. As you can see, the AR platform is very versatile and you can swap out parts and customize just about everything on it to your tastes and your mode of operation. What I have on mine are parts that work well for me that I find comfortable. It's important to not get caught up in mill spec this or that because as you can see some of the mill spec parts are actually inferior to what you can get, namely the bolt carrier groups nickel boron coatings. Uh, if I were specking an AR for zombie patrol groups I would focus on the barrel and the bolt carrier group. I would spec a barrel that's made from 11.595E or 4150 steel that is high pressure tested and magnetic particle, magnetic particle inspected, chrome lined with a twist rate of 1 and 7, 8 or 9, which are pretty much going to be your standard twist rates anyways. I would spec a bolt carrier group and upper coated in nickel boron either from Fail Zero, Spikes, WMD, or I don't know if there's maybe a couple other companies out there. Uh, just as long as it meets the specification of also being high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected. Uh, those are what I would consider to be the meat and potatoes of the AR, are the barrel and the bolt carrier group. Everything else can sort of be done according to each zombie fighter's preference, everything from the grip to the style of stock, to the type of optic. So I hope this video helps you out. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and give, it, give my video some likes. Check out my other videos. And hopefully this helps you out. See you next time on Gundamentals.